Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how easy it is to build a concealment flag. This is my biggest one yet. This one is 36 by 20, says we the people on there. It's made out of 22 gauge steel. It's absolutely beautiful. I don't make this, this particular piece right here. I have somebody make them for me because I don't have the machine to make it. But making the box and everything for it is very easy and it's a lot of fun and they come out absolutely beautiful. This is it with the cover on it. And I still got to stain it with a, uh, I use a, I use golden pecan and it gives it an absolutely beautiful finish. If you look at my other videos of the smaller flags I build, the 24 by 13, it leaves a beautiful finish on it. I, I love it. And then I use this uh, clear coat spray that comes in a can, like a spray paint can. I don't have any of it right now, but it's a can just like this, and it's clear coat, and it gives it a nice satin finish to it, and it really brings out the color and the grain of this wood beautifully. Um, this wood is only, uh, it's $24 for a big piece of wood at Home Depot, and it's, it's not the most expensive wood, but like I said, the grain on this wood is beautiful. Especially after it's all cleaned up, sanded and stained, it looks very, very nice. Um, like I said, you can get this piece right here that I have on the bottom here. It's 24 by 48, two foot by four foot for $24. They have smaller ones, but because this is such a big build, uh, 36 by 20, I had to get the bigger piece. You need one for the top, one for the bottom. And then your side rails, well these would be the end rails. These are 20 inches for both sides. And then just 45 with my miter saw over there. And then the bigger ones are 36 inches. Are 36 inches long. And that's the longer rails here. And those also are 45 on the corners, just like this both sides um, then I always set them up and fit them use my speed square to make sure they're square and then check the overall overall dimensions that they're 20 by 36 and it's gonna be perfect once I get the bottom piece cut and the top piece I have the bottom piece laid out on the bottom here that I'm gonna cut on my table saw I already glued this up and use wood filler on the holes. Usually on my flag builds, I don't use no nails at all because I haven't been able to find a good wood filler that covers up the wood holes real nice. This is my first time trying this color natural, but I have tried the other colors. I've tried caulk, I've tried everything. This patch and paint, which is perfect for the gap that's between the baseboard and your wall in your house. You just put this on there with your finger, wipe it off with a damp rag. You don't have to paint it or do nothing, and it comes out perfect. It's a big secret for people that hate having a gap between their baseboard and their wall like I do. It's a, it's a pet peeve. This will solve your problem. It's called patch and paint. But all those uh, wood fillers that they have, they all claim that they're paintable and stainable, and they're, they won't shrink or crack. That's a lie. I've been doing this for a long time in home remodeling, and... The stain doesn't cover it. The paint will, but not stain. And they do crack. And some of my other builds, I use them. I don't use it no more. Um, I, I use glue to glue all my things down. And then if you want, they, they sell these little L brackets at Home Depot that you can put inside of your, uh, of your flag build to, to hold this piece down to the bottom piece if you wanted to. And then I cover that. They sell this uh, Husky drawer liner to line uh, your big rollaway toolboxes for mechanics. This is like $12 for a big roll. And then I put this at the bottom of the flag when, once I'm done with it. So it, it kind of covers all these up, these little L brackets, if you want to use them. I haven't used them yet. This is only my third flag build. Like I said, I'm very much an amateur at this. I already messed up the first time. 
So I had to start over and, and make another one. The, I was shooting a video yesterday and the frame wouldn't square up for some reason. I don't know what happened. And I think the wood was twisted. So I had to go get a new piece of wood. I'll, I'll sand all this down once I get the bottom piece cut. And then, like I said, I disattach it with glue and, and clamps all the way around, let it set and dry. And on my other ones, I've even picked it up in the air and dropped it on the floor in the carpet just to see how strong it was and it didn't phase it, it didn't fall apart, nothing happened. So the Tidal Bond glue is very strong for your wood projects, guys. It's a great thing. I mentioned in a couple other videos, I might give one of these flag builds away to somebody. I'll see, maybe if we get a good response, maybe I'll give one away to somebody. Like I said, I love helping people. I love giving things away. I gave away somebody a nice, beautiful, uh, handmade concealment shelf that I built last month to a lady out in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Um, like I said, I work a full-time job six days a week. I'm off today. Um, and then I, I, I used to remodel homes. I still do as a side project. And then um, in my spare time, I build whatever comes to my mind, like all the, everything you see on my site, on my channel, I built myself. Like I said, you don't need no big fancy tools. I don't have nothing fancy. The most expensive piece of tool I own is this $140 table saw that I got from Harbor Freight. That's how I got started in woodworking. I'm a gun collector. I have a lot of firearms. I'm a hunter. I'm an outdoor person. I love hunting and fishing. I always saw a lot of concealment furniture for sale online, but they were outrageous. Like I said, for a little two drawer nightstand, they were almost $1,000. So I came up with some ideals of what I wanted to build for my concealment tables. And like I said, those were all first time builds for me. I had no experience in none of that stuff. The last time I did any woodworking was in, in high school in 1988. So, but I do know how to use basic hand tools, drills, uh, tape measure, speed square, the little basic tools. Like I said, you can learn from your mistakes. Don't be afraid to try. But that's how I got started. I couldn't afford to go buy all the expensive tools. I had a wife and kids. I, I couldn't do it. And I, I always said, once I get a, uh, get good in my life financially stable, I get me a little shop like I have right here, a little workshop. It's not a lot, but it's my it's my workshop. I like it a lot. Once I get a, and this is where I build all my stuff at right here. It's just a, a real tiny small shop. Like I said, nothing fancy. My most expensive piece of tool is my table saw right there, Warrior from Harbor Freight. And that's it. And these are just all basic hand tools and stuff from jobs that I've done and that's pretty much it guys that's that's my shop it's very small me it's not even I don't even think it's 12 by 12 it might be 12 by 7 or 8 but it's perfect for me I, I love it it's my little getaway I can come and think and build things if I want to build or do whatever I want you know what I mean so that's how I built my consumer tables if you go to my channel and see all the builds I've done those are all the first first time I've ever did any of those builds but like I said, I do make errors here and there. Like I said, I originally started this project yesterday, but I messed up because the wood here was twisted. I couldn't get a perfect square. Ideally, we're making a square box is what we're doing. With a top and a bottom. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use drawer slides or hinges on the lid, but it's basically we're just making a box, but the box ain't square. The top and everything else is not gonna be square. So that's very important. I'm, a, I'm very much a perfectionist, so it's got to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect, or I don't like it. This is the way it is. So, yeah, once you get glue the corners up, measure out your top and bottom piece, cut them and sand them. I'm going to cut out my bottom piece now. And, uh, well, this other piece is drying, and we'll take it from there. Like I said, it's a very easy build. It's a lot of fun. And like I said, maybe I'm going to give one, of the, I think I'm going to give one of the smaller ones away. If you go 
if you've been following me along on my other builds, you'll see the other ones I build are 24 by 13. There's a lot of room inside of them. But like I said, this one is my biggest one yet. This is 36 by 20 inches. So this will be able to hold, you know, AR-15s or whatever. You can get this flag where it says, we the people, or it doesn't say nothing. It's just an American flag. Like I said, 22 gauge steel. And it's beautiful. I sanded it all up with 15,000 grit sandpaper. These can be stained, uh, painted. They can be uh, powder coated, whatever you want to do. I, I leave mine just like this because they're beautiful. But there's a lot of things you can do to them. It's steel, so, and it leaves a nice finish on them. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and I'll be right back, guys. I don't know how to pause or mute on my phone so you guys don't hear the saw running, but see you, see you guys soon. All right, everybody, I got the bottom piece cut. This is kind of just an idea on what it's gonna look like. Like I said, we basically, we just built the box. I gotta still sand it and glue everything down, but this is kind of what it's gonna look like. This would be the lid here, and we'll have a box. I gotta glue everything together still and give it a really good sanding. And I'll show you guys how I, I just glue and, and uh, clamp everything down. But I cut the bottom board and that's how big the box is gonna be. It's about four inches deep. And I'll get this all sanded up real good and, and glued down. It's still drying drying from the corners I just cut. So I'll be back as soon as I move on to the next step, guys. I hope you guys all have a great day. We'll see you guys soon. Hey everybody, welcome back. So I got everything all sanded up and glued together. Like I said, just a little nice square box, 36 by 20. I'm gonna stain it and uh, probably put the, the, the liner on the inside. They make this liner for Husky. That's what mechanics put in the bottom of their toolbox, similar to what our moms used to put in our kitchen cabinets or in our drawers. You get a nice big roll for 12 bucks. And it's, you know, like a, kind of feels like a little leathery, but it's not. But it, I haven't put it in my other builds, but I might put it inside here once it's all stained up and stuff. I haven't decided if I'm gonna, what kind of hinges I'm gonna use yet. If I'm gonna use uh, drawer slides or piano hinges, the drawer slides would require a little cutout here for this top rail to slide out. It's, I have it on my consumer tables, but I don't know if I want it on this flag yet. So I gotta decide what I'm gonna do with that. Or I might use these uh, full overlay inset hinges that I use on my floating fireplace mantles right there. I might use these. See, this has a liner in it, but this one's not done yet. It's a floating concealment mantle, about five foot long. I'm not finished up with this one yet. And like I said, this uh, golden pecan stain leaves a very nice finish to this wood. It's beautiful with the grain on there. So I'll get this all stained up and uh, I'll get that clear coat that I use. And I just use an old white rag to apply the stain to it. It dries very quickly, but like I said, it leaves a really nice finish to it. So let me make sure the camera's all set up for you guys can see what's going on. So I'm just going to go around and stain it, get some color to it. Again, this is no nails, this is just all glue held together. I might put those L brackets on the inside, I haven't decided yet, but I might. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do that or not. The glue is very strong. Like I said, my other ones I, I did a drop test and 
they held together, nothing happened to them. So I was very pleased with it. I put about three or four coats of the stain on here. Um, it's not like some of the other stains, the more you apply, the darker, darker it gets. It doesn't get very dark. At least just a really nice finish to it that kind of looks like a, like log cabin material, which I, which I love that look. As you can tell, I, all my tables and things that I build, I stain them with this class, uh, classic uh, golden pecan stain. It leaves a really nice finish to it. Getting low on stain, I'll probably have to pick up some later. But like I said, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna use is for hinges. I haven't decided yet, but I'm thinking about putting the drawer liner on the inside here, which I think I'm gonna do on this build. I didn't do it on the other two. Again, guys, this is the this is my third time ever building one of these, so. Like I said, anybody can do it. All, all levels of talent, you can do it. Like I said, I have no experience in any of this stuff, but I, I, I know how to use basic hand tools and that's pretty much all you need to know how to do. Like I said, I don't have no big fancy equipment in my shop. My most expensive thing in my shop is, is this uh, $140 table saw I got from Harbor Freight. That's it. And you know, drills, tape measures, screwdrivers, drills, that stuff, that, that's really all you need. All that big fancy stuff, it's nice, but I can't afford it and I can still build what I love building with these basic tools. Let me know what you guys think. How, you guys like this build? Is it something you would be interested in? And if you have built it, share some pictures with me. I'd, I'd love to see somebody else's builds too. Like I said in my other videos, I love helping people. I always have. Um, I'm probably going to give one of these flags away to somebody for free. All you have to do is be a subscriber to my channel. But I give a lot of stuff away for free. Just because I like giving and helping people. Um, I gave away a nice concealment shelf to a lady in Auburn Hills, Michigan about a month ago for her son, a surprise for her son. They absolutely loved it. But, but yeah, just kick it on with some stain. And I'll show you how it looks. It's, it's, really it really, it's really nice. The contrast is nice with this wood. The grain of this wood is amazing. Like I said, I don't use the most expensive wood out there. I don't have a lot of money. Like I said, I do this in my free time. I work a full-time job six days a week. But I like to stay busy and build stuff. Stuff that I could never afford to buy, so I said, I'm gonna try and make it on my own. And that's how all this started. It's a lot of fun, I'll say that. You learn a lot of stuff as well. Like I said, this is for all levels of skill. There's no special degrees or things you gotta know to, to know how to make something. It, it's a basic box with a lid on it, and that, that that's pretty much it. Like I said, I do have L brackets that I might put on the inside. I didn't use it on my other builds, but I might, I might uh, do it if I'm gonna give one of these away for somebody, just in case. But I haven't used any of it yet. These little all brackets to put on the inside, just to you know, kind of hold together, and then that black uh, drawer liner will cover it all up. Uh, as you can see, it gives it a beautiful finish with that golden pecan stain. I love it. It makes the project so nice. Uh, and like I said, all I do is I use a clear a clear coat spray can from Home Depot like a spray can, and I put a couple good coats on this and it gives it a nice satin finish to it. Not too dull and not very shiny like semi-gloss. Just, it's a, it's a really nice contrast. And that's it. And then, it doesn't take long at all. You can do this in a couple hours at, at home. That's what, it, that's what I do. 
It doesn't. It's, it's not a hard build at all. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, you'll learn a lot. It doesn't require a lot of expensive tools and things like that. It's very, very easy to make, very affordable to make. Like I said, the wood is about $45 and then a couple of dollars for some hinges. So the most expensive thing is having the, the actual metal part of the flag made. But still, you can build this with the flag for under $150. That's pretty amazing, you know what I mean? For a concealment furniture for $150, bucks, it's to build on your own. Or you can go buy one from somebody for three, four, five, six hundred bucks. That They're selling all over these flags. I'm the only one I've seen that has an actual steel flag. So, and there you have it, guys. Look at the color on that. I'll let it dry up. I'll put another coat on there and put the drawer liner inside and I'll show you guys how I finish everything up. We'll see you guys again. Have a great day guys. So I decided to go with the piano hinge on this consumer flag build. I found it was the easiest thing to do was to go back to the piano hinge. That's how I did my other one. Um, I got the black, uh, a drawer liner put in there and I'm gonna put the flag on in a second but here's a clear coat I was talk, talking about that I use on there it finishes in five minutes no drips no streaks and, and it gives it a nice satin finish to it not too shiny not too dull it really brings out the grain in this wood here with the stain that I used I'm going to clear coat it with this a couple times, let it dry, and then I'll show you how I use this Gorilla clear Gorilla glue tape for the flag with the pins on it, and that flag build will be complete. It could have been done days ago, but like I said, I do work a full-time job, and I do this in my spare time, so sometimes I come home from work, I'm, I'm exhausted, so it gets pushed to the side so I can get time to do it, but... You shake it up real good, but it, it, it gives a beautiful finish to it. I, <clears throat> I had a couple of touch-ups I had to touch up on there, and I just put the last coat. Of, it's got about two or three coats of, of that uh, golden pecan stain on it. Like I said, it, it gives it a beautiful finish. And this, you just spray this on just like spray paint. I give it a couple good coats of this just to protect it and it really gives a nice finish to it like I said it's not shiny like semi-gloss it's just a a nice little satin finish to it so if you were to drop some water pop or whatever on there it ain't gonna affect the wood or clean it with something it ain't gonna mess nothing up that's the only purpose of, of why I put this on there. I'll give it a couple of nice coats of this, and then I'll put the flag on there, and this build will be complete, guys. Let me get some air to it, let it dry up good. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Like I said, this is my biggest one yet. Like, you, like I said, it just gives it a nice, a nice clean finish to it, to the box. I think it's five or six dollars it costs, I think. It's not very expensive, but it does protect your, your project. And like I said, you can barely notice it that 
Like I said, it's not overwhelmingly shiny. I'm gonna do the inside of the lid, but I wanna cover up the, uh, the drawer liner on the inside just so it doesn't get nothing on the inside of the drawer liner and, and give it a shine. Is it a couple, couple coats of this? Probably just two coats. Just to protect it. When you spray this, the nozzle on there, I noticed now in the new cans, they give you three different nozzles that you turn on the spray can for your for your spray pattern. It's pretty cool. It's a brand it's a brand new product they have. And it has a little dial right on the on the lid here. Right here on the lid. It's not on this particular one. I didn't get it this time. But it has a little dial with three spray patterns that you can choose. This one gives off a nice spray pattern. Like I said, just a couple quick coats. It dries quick within five minutes, it says, but it, it seems like it dries quicker than that. Like, I just sprayed this and it, it's already completely dry. Like I said, it's a, it's a great product. This just clear coat I got here. Just to protect the wood and it really brings out the, the grain and uh, your stain on here, it, does, it gives it a very nice finish to it. I really like it a lot. Any wood project that I build, most of them I, I coat them with this just to protect the finish on it, like the tables and stuff, so they don't get messed up. If, Like I said, if you were to spill something on them, this protects it. It's, it's really nice. Like I said, it dries, it dries very quickly as well. the outside one more time and up flip it over and do the bottom of it it doesn't have an overpowering smell to it but you can definitely smell the paint but like I said it's not overpowering where you, where you have to do it outside. It's, it's not too strong at all. But you, you get used to the smell very quickly. It doesn't, it doesn't smell bad. It doesn't smell like spray paint. Like I said, it's not really overpowering. Couple of good coats on it to protect it, and that's it. Let it dry up real good. I said for the flag to help hold it down because this is so big I use that gorilla gorilla tape right here clear gorilla tape and I put it on the back sides of of these to hold it down onto the wood that way it doesn't move or nothing it doesn't really move anyways because like I said this is 22 gauge steel it's really strong and durable but just to hold it down for extra protection and then like I said, it, it already comes with holes in it to put these little pins in there and holds it in place. So 
I'll cut some strips of this tape and put it on there and put the flag on there. I still got to get a couple of dampers or shocks, whatever you guys want to call it, for the inside of this so when I open it up and it's against the wall, it'll stay just like this. Put one on each, each side of it. I don't have any at the moment, but I got to get a couple more. The flag, I sanded the flag down with 15,000 grit sandpaper. So it, it's got a really nice finish to it. Like I said, you can paint these, you can powder coat them, do whatever you want. You can use this as a template for other flag builds if you want. So if anybody's interested in just the flag, let me know and I'll see if I can get one for you. And if, you, if you're thinking about building your own concealment box, if you, and if you just want to get the flag for yourself, like I said, my guy, he makes this We The People one, and then he makes the regular American flag. And I, I think there's a blue line across here for uh, firefighters or po uh, police officers. So I'm going to cut this Gorilla Tape, put it on the back of some of these, holds it in place real nice. This Gorilla Tape is, is a great product too, it's very, very strong. I just put it in, on here in the middle just to hold it down to the wood once I put it onto the wood so there's no, nothing moves around. running out of it. I'm going to have to get some more. I've, I've had this one and I've done four flag builds with this one and, it, and it's, it's still got a, quite a few, a little bit left, but it's definitely getting low, that's for sure. And it, it just gives it some padding, that's all it does, and keeps it attached to the wood. You don't need a lot of it. Just when you spend a lot of time on a project, you want to take care of it, and not get it all scratched up and stuff. That's how I am. I, I I take care of all my stuff. I try not to let it get scratched up or nothing like that. It's a little hard to peel the top piece of this tape off sometimes. I gotta use tweezers to do it because like I said it's very very strong tape. It works it works amazing. It's very strong. Done, uh, I think four flag builds with the same roll of tape so definitely I used a lot of it and it's a great product works very very well oh, I got one little piece left on here that I'm trying to get off without ruining it if I can Okay, I got plenty on there, so. Now I gotta pull the film, the other side off of it. Like I said, that's, a, that's the hard part sometimes. 
because it's clear, it's hard to see where the end of it, the ending is. Once you get a little piece of corner pulled up, you can get up here, you know, those pliers and pull the rest of it off without pulling the whole piece of tape off. Once you get a piece of the corner up, it's pretty simple after that. I'm going to get the tape all peeled off. I'll be right back, guys. This is going to take a minute. All right, I got all the tape off, or the back side of the tape. Now I'm going to set this in place. Once you get it in place, let's go over it with a rag to get the glue to stick real good to the wood. I'll put some weight on it after I get it in place, but right now it's there. That's where I want it. And these little tacks. They just help to hold it in place. My other flag build, the pins worked really good on it. Like I said, this is the first big one that I did, so we'll see how they work. The other ones work good, so I'm assuming these are gonna work just as good. into the wood and that's pretty much it I think this is going to hold, I think, two or three uh, AR-15s or handguns, whatever you want to 
definitely can hold a lot of handguns, but big rifles, I think two or three. Two for sure, and I think three, but we're going to find out when I get done. there but maybe not like I said I love building stuff it's so fun and I love making anything, it's just so much fun. Especially when you see the finished product and you know that you did it by yourself. There's, it's a different feeling than buying it. Like I said, the hardest part was trying to, the hardest part was trying to get the actual flag made, finding somebody that can make it for me. That was the hardest part. Every, I seen, there's a lot of them where people, their, their flags are painted. I didn't want that, I wanted something different. So for me, that was the hardest part, was finding somebody that could actually make this metal flag for me at a reasonable price, you know what I mean? guys wanted over a hundred dollars for them I thought it was a little too much and then I found a guy that was very reasonable and I've gotten four off of him so far uh -oh. like I said some of the other ones they were they were just way overpriced I don't think there's much involved building it. If you had the right machine for it, a CNC or water jet, however he did it, but he did an amazing job. He did exactly what I wanted, so. But altogether, you, you shouldn't pay to build the whole entire flag. It's, is under $150. It's, it shouldn't be that outrageous. Oh, yeah, see, I got a gap here because the wood had a bow in there. It's not letting these thumbtacks reach. That's why I'm having a problem with it. I'm going to have to clamp this in a little bit and try and get it together. So these tacks and holder are, are I'm going to have to get longer tacks. The taps, tap, taps just hold it in place better. I mean, it's held in place already good. It ain't going no place, but... I guess that's what happened. You use cheap wood. Like I said, it had a, a bow in there and I cut it out. But that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, it turned out beautiful. I'm very happy with it. And like I said, I might, I might give one of the other ones away to somebody. So, if you're a subscriber and you're interested, watch for the video. I like making things and trying to give it to some of the people that can't make it or don't have the ability to buy one. That's how I got started. I couldn't go out and spend three, four hundred dollars on something like this. And finally I said, you know what, I'm going to try and make my own. And that's exactly what I did. I had no experience at all doing it. But you can, you can build whatever you want. It's, it's not hard. I did a little bit of research. Just to kind of get an ideal. And if I'm going to use sli drawer slides on here, hinges. But 
just to get the idea of what it would look like. And I started making my own. That's how I got started. And like I said, this is all done with your basic hand tools. I'll turn the camera around, you can see. Let me see. Oh, okay. I got just basic tools in my shop. These are all tools that every man would have in their garage. Nothing fancy. Just basic tools. Like I said, my most expensive tool in my shop is uh, probably this rigid frame and nail nailer and my table saw. Like I said, nothing big and fancy. So you can you can build whatever you want with just you know the regular basic tools that most men have in their garage. That's all. Now you can see the the pins. They give it a nice contrast to it. Once you get them in place, I'm going to clear coat the back side of this now. Let it dry up, and that would be it for that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Anybody has any questions, you can comment. I'll, I'll answer any questions. Or if you need help with something, feel free to message me. I'll be more than happy to help you out. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.